Okay. Um, I'm, the topic here is ASICs, so it's application-specific integrated circuits. I would assume that everybody knows that, but if you don't, that's basically what it is. So if you can imagine a PCB with a lot of components on it, and basically what we do is we work with companies to actually take that PCB with all of the components and put them in one device. And there's real good reasons for that, and I hope I can explain that as we go along here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit about S3 Group. S3, by the way, so, uh, means silicon and software systems. Um, a little bit about our business unit, which is Semiconductor Solutions. We'll make our way through um, what we call IP, intellectual property. You'll, you'll get the idea as we go through the slides. We'll talk about uh, our tailored ASICs. And talk about uh, some ex an example of an ASIC in the RFs world and also, of course, in the industrial process control. And we'll finish then with two things, really. I'll take you through a, a practical example of a, an ASIC that we developed roughly about 12 months ago. We finished it for a customer in, in the US. They, they, um, they actually produced uh, flow, flow valve control solutions. We'll take you through that in detail, and then talk about the advantages of using an ASIC in your products. So just on the company, we're in our 31st year. Um, we are independent VC funded. We have 280 employees. Uh, the majority of people in our company are engineers, okay, design engineers as such. Um, our company is split between two business units. So we have Semiconductor Solutions, which is very much um, IC development. And then we have a, a separate division called Connected Health, which is a software-based uh, company for um, the, the health, assisted health business. Um, if you look at what we've been doing over the years, we have kind of two sides to the business. One is custom ASICs, uh, complete turnkey solutions. So what we do is we design and deliver the, the, the part as such, the ASIC. Uh, so we take care of all of the supply chain management of, you know, the fabrication, the, the testing, the, uh, you know, the packaging, all of that, uh, and deliver the product. So basically we start with defining the product requirements with customers, and then we project manage the whole project right to the finish and deliver the product to the customer. We've produced and uh, delivered millions of devices at this point in time in our 31 years. Um, and we're number one ranked mixed signal um, IP. Now, when we say mixed signal, we mean analog and digital, okay? Which makes it quite a strength. So, if, you, if the message I, I want to get across to you is, you know, if you think of our capabilities, it's mixed signal, analog, digital design, as well as RF and the integration of core processor cores in our solutions. So, we can do the whole thing, and I'll show you an example of that later on. Our headquarters are based in Dublin. And as you'll see from here, we're the center of the universe. Uh, we have design centers in Dublin, Cork, and Prague. Uh, we have uh, Jan, our uh, engineering director here with us today, and he's got a team of more than 25 engineers here in Prague. We have also design centers in Poland, in Lisbon, and in San Jose. And we have a worldwide sales pro pro processor, if you like, structure, you know, mainly that they're located in the Asia region. We don't do development in the Asia region. So we're very much a European-centric type company. When we say IP portfolio, this is a, a, a very big library of, de of device intellectual property, if you like, that we have designed down through the years. Um, and it really goes into many, many areas, such as precision converters, HD, D2A converters. It, it covers power management. Uh, sensing, for example, uh, clocking, um, wireless and wireline analog front ends. So this library exists within our S3 Group company now, and we use that to actually apply to projects to develop ASICs. So we're also expert at integrating performance, what we call mixed signal, of course, and RF with any processor on silicon. So you will see later on that you know we've worked very closely with ARM. We have also worked with X x86 processors and PIC controllers. So we have a wide array of processor cores that we can integrate into the ASIC. So what does an ASIC look like? Um, and just to let you know that we're right outside the door here to the left, just next to Aon. 
and you can actually see the, a graphic of this particular ASIC, and we can explain the blocks and where they fit in, in the ASIC, you know, the converters, the power management, the processor cores, all of those. So what you see here is basically it's designed to supply of the end product. This is a summary of a mixed signal IP portfolio. I put this up because on the left side of the, the chart you'll see the nodes, process nodes. You may or may not be aware of this, but if you're designing, for example, a, a mobile phone, you're going to be doing an ASIC with very small geometries, okay? So you have to have these types of devices, as you can see, in very small geometries. Whereas if you're doing industrial, you're probably on 180 nanometer type process nodes. So this is very important because there is a cost. The bigger the node, the less of the cost. The smaller the node, the higher the cost. Because you're dealing now with foundries, you know, and it costs to actually manufacture the wafers. The second point to make is you'll see that, for example, if you look at our ADC, DAX, and so on, we go up to very high uh, data rates and very high resolution as well. So we've built this up over years and we continue to build this up. We have partners. So ARM, we mentioned already, but we have many more processor core partners. This is TSMC. So we're very, uh, very close to TSMC, Taiwan, semiconductor manufacturing, biggest in the world. Another would be SMIC in China and Global Foundries. And you'll see also, for example, a test houses, you know, and packaging, such as packaging, so Amcor, Presto would be test houses. They're here in Europe, for example. So we've built up a very strong partnership of supply chain management, you know, for, to be able to produce the ASICs. So design strengths then from S3 Group falls into like three categories, which is very important when we talk about IoT. The first is sensing it, and sensing it means we are capable of working with sensors, various types of sensors, whether they be temperature, pressure, flow, for example, and basically it can be wired or wireless connectivity, both, either. And you, as you can see, I've just listed some you know, wireless connectivity um, topologies or, or standards down here, including ISM, band, Sigfox, uh, you know, narrowband IoT, etc. Then when you bring the data in, we've got to be able to process it. So basically, we have uh, very capable engineering teams to be able to gather the data, so convert, say, analog to digital, and then take it in and use the, the core, the processor cores to actually process that data. And then, of course, communicate it, deliver it out the other end to the system, whether it be in a wireless form or wired. So you can see that all of these uh, strengths, these design strengths, fall very well into sensor products, for example. Sensor products that, as time goes by, we're seeing a trend, you know, the movement of, you know, more data gathering, more processing at the edge. And we saw some speakers mention that here today, which is very interesting. We see the very same thing, that, you know, the the... The sensors, there's a whole range of sensors out there, they're very low cost, but in time, more intelligence will go into the sensor end. Taylor's a ASICs, this is just a brief list of the kind of ASICs that projects that we have completed. They would be, for example, we'll talk about the smart valve flow control ASIC in just a moment, take you through that in detail. Power management units, very, you know, this, this customer was doing systems for automotive and it was really in-car entertainment systems, but they had a whole range of, you know, LDOs and converters and stuff like that, power modules that they needed to put into one chip, and they had a space problem, so they needed this. So this is a, a system, power management system, that is controlled as such, that is programmable as well. And then you use MEMS, for example, you, you may be familiar with that, interface ASIC, Bluetooth headset controllers, and then on the RF side, we've been involved in satellite and modem handset RF ASICs. So the, the list goes on. So we've done quite a lot in the communication side, in the, in the consumer side, in the industrial side. This is one example. This is a customer of ours, Iridium. Uh, basically, they're in the uh, satellite uh, handset, if you like, satellite communications business. Um, we are probably on our third, fourth, maybe, generation of development of, of ASICs with this, this, this 
particular customer. And they're a classic example of having a, you know, having a handset solution. This is communications from ground to satellite as such. Having a handset solution that's basically full of components. And they needed to, you know, have the size or quarter the size. And the only way you can do that really is put it in an ASIC. And again, the, 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 they had the, the volume and they had the actual business, you know, looking at, say, three years out to be able to do that. We're going to go into smart valve monitoring and control, a ASIC example. One thing I just want to mention as we go along, and I'll come back to it again later on, when people think of ASICs, and we get this all the time, and they say, well, you know, it's very expensive to design an ASIC. The way the business formula is quite simple, actually, to, works out. Let's say, for example, you had something in the region of 25,000 units that you were shipping of, of your sensor product or product. And let's say your bills of material was $100. With our designs, what we can do is cut that by at least 50% in terms of cost. We have all the IP blocks, you know? So we can actually take away a huge chunk of, of, of actual cost. You will see the example I'm just about to cover actually had greater than 50% saving. So if you multiply the volume that you're shipping by the saving, let's say $25, that turns out to be something just $1.25 million of saving per year. So the cost of doing the development is paid back within one to two years very quickly. It's a very simple mathematical formula. But most people get you know, caught up in the, the first piece of it, that, oh, there's non-recurring engineering involved. Absolutely there is. But the payback is really quick. And then you have a device or a solution that will last another three, four, five, six years. And you're saving that amount of money every year. So it's a real good deal. Consider ASICs. <laughs> okay. All right. This is a, a customer that never did an ASIC before. They're an oil and gas company. They're in the US. They're in Texas. And basically what they do is they produce a flow valve control units, valves, essentially. So these are great big assemblies, you know. And they've got pipes coming in and pipes going out and there's gas or oil flowing through. And they need to be able to do a few things. The first thing they need to be able to do is be able to control the position of the valve. In other words, open it, close it, you know, a little bit. They need to be able to monitor the actual flow rate. They need to monitor the pressure. They need to monitor temperature. They want to do diagnostics on the device. So this company had a discrete component solution, uh, a PCB with lots of components that was doing this. And it kind of sits on top of the assembly of, of the actual valve and that was, life was beautiful, right? Um, except that this, this was costing them roughly in the region of 90 to $100, their bills of material. And they were moving into their next generation, you know, roadmap developments. So the question is, what direction would they go to get costs down significantly, space saving, power consumption, dissipation, and lots of other features. What direction would they go in? So they considered an ASIC. So we, they approached us and we started having dialogue. We started discussing stuff with them, you know? And basically they had a number of objectives. And you'll see here, for example, they heard they could, you know, through a customized silicon integration, they could increase their top line by adding more value to the existing product line. In other words, they could put more features and functions in the actual device itself, which would be interesting. They're keeping an eye on the market because they need to get their costs down. They're keeping an eye on competition. They need to be more competitive. Increase their bottom line by reducing their electronic bills of material. These are our objectives. Extend their portfolio into new application areas. It turns out that the actual functions that they designed in means that their roadmap is very secure for many years out and they're introducing new, new flavors of the device, you know, every other quarter. So these are the customer requirements. Allow for portfolio tiering, meaning various applications. Um, multiple sensor interfaces we were involved with here. Pressure, temperature diagnostics, integrated smart control loop, very important. Control the valve positioning, you know, the flow. Um, communications, in this case, there were two types of communications. One is just regular digital, such as UART, SPI, etc. The other is very industrial. And in this world, it's foundation field bus and heart. 
come into it. So these were the, you know, the, the features we had to design in or were, were required. They wanted to use an, an, an integrated ARM processor core. Sometimes the customer will say, I want to use this core. We will recommend cores too. You know, we work with the customer very closely. And designed to be intrinsically safe. Now, when you think of the environment that they're operating in, oil and gas, we have to adhere to intrinsically safe design, very, very strict design, you know, methodology to make sure there is no risk, there is no sparks or short circuits or anything like that. It's very, very, very crucial design. And then power, low power, absolutely low power, less than 20 milliwatts. So we set about working with the customer. This is how we do it. You know, we get together and over a period of weeks, maybe a month or two, we really do work on developing what we call a product requirements document. You know, it's a very strict definition. Uh, we're looking at what their sense, control and connect requirements are. And then basically we want to build a solution that, that you know, satisfies their current needs, but also satisfies their future product roadmap needs. So we work with them on that. And then finally, we say we applied our silicon economics. What that means basically is we advise them on what process node to use because we know how much it costs to actually produce wafers, you know, at TSMC and the other fab locations. So from a slightly technical scenario now, the ASIC solution then, this is what it looks like. We actually have this, uh, we have this guy in a, in a graphic form sitting out on our table out there, come, come out and have a look and we'll, we'll show you the blocks and where they sit in an ASIC, it's an experience. Um, and you'll see, you know, there's memory blocks in here, um, you know, we have v various blocks and Jan will be delighted to take you through that, right? <laughs> um, basically, when you go down through the main blocks in here, there's an ARM Cortex-M4, there's a PIC microcontroller in, inside here. There's analog front ends, including, you know, 14-bit SAR ADCs. There's digital to analog converters. There's power switches, multiplexes, it's a, and on. In other words, the point is we're showing you a very elaborate, you know, very high-tech um, ASIC development. Some ASICs are not like this at all. They're very simple. We do, we do very simple stuff to very complex. So we're kind of showing you the, that end of it, okay? Um, and basically, the interface is then two types, of course, as we said, industrial, and these are wireline, of course, industrial, and then multiple digital interfaces. One of the other requirements, by the way, is that because this is in the field, these valves are in the fields, they're in oil fields. So essentially, you know, remote up upgrading and updating of, you know, the, the functions via software is essential also. And then, of course, security is one, one more aspect built in here. This is a little bit of a small diagram, but the idea basically is to show you that on the left, typical sensors and actuators. So the sensors are the pressure, you know, temperature, diagnostics, various other sensors. That's the information coming in, and that's coming in here through the ATD converter, the multiplexer there. And the actuator is the actual control of the valve itself. So we're controlling the valve, okay? And what's going on in the middle, you have a lot of power management blocks in here. We, are, we have all these, we design all these in. And then we have the controller itself with the memory. So you have ARM, uh, ARM Cortex-M4 here, and then you have SRAM, and you also have the, the flash memory in here. So we have all of these blocks inside the actual chip. And then finally, the interface to the outside world, digital and, you know, the industrial interfaces, they're all blocks inbuilt as well. So the customer gets this device then, when you kind of stand back from this, in actual fact, this is a very much a process control type solution in a chip. So, you know, PLCs, you have a lot of that stuff out there. This could easily do what, what that, that actual function does in, in classic, you know, programmable logic controllers, for example. Okay? So, it's a very intelligent, very, very highly, highly um, developed, uh, featured, and feature-rich device. Okay. So then the features, again, can operate from current loop, 4 to 20 milliamps, temperature range is extended, has to, it's in bad weather, you know, uh, very extended temperatures, supports full control of the valve, upgrades via firmware, okay, remotely. Um, industrial interfaces, variation of digital um, interfaces allow for connection of, of different peripherals, no problem. 
uh, an external flash can be added as a memory as well. So just to give you a flavor as to you know, the kind of complexity that can be in these, these ASICs, uh, which we have the expertise to implement. This is just a slide, not to go through the detail, it shows you like four key, uh, you know, phases of a, of a project that we manage. First of all is this the ASIC development itself, and of course aligned with that is the actual uh, requirements definition, which we work very closely with the customer. All through this process, by the way, you know, we're interacting with the customer, there's bi-weekly phone calls and, you know, monthly updates and status reports and everything, it's really detailed. Prototyping, we prototype the digital side of things to make sure that before we implement it, it actually works perfect. So the, the idea is to get this ASIC to work f correct first time out. And this is exactly what happened here. We do the validation, validation and then qualification, and then finally we manage all of the part delivery, in other words, the supply chain management through our partners. So to, just two slides to go. What was the customer's outcome for this project? You know, and just to let you know, I think we're coming into our second or third phase now of development with this customer. So they've gone on and they have, an, a, you know, a variation of this for other products. They've, they're quite encouraged, you know, uh, and so we have we've more projects going on, you know. Um, reduced power, very much so. Um, smaller form factor, so space saving, space saving, you know. Um, improved reliability due to less components. So you're not, you know, you have a PCB, you have to buy stuff from analog devices and TI and this one and that one, you know, and stick it all together and you hope that you're going to get really long-term consistent performance. With an ASIC, it does exactly what it's defined to do consistently. And that's, that's something to, to, to think about. When we talk about signal integrity, it really means that we design in very good point-to-point -point signal, signal conditioning, if you like, inside the device. So no noise, you know, no interference, that kind of thing. They saved greater than 80%, would you believe, on their electronic bomb. So they're, you know, the, the, the engineering manager who actually decided to go with us on this is a hero, you know. So anyway, but I um, don't know if he got promoted, maybe not, but he's a hero anyway. But uh, yeah, huge saving in bills and material, massive saving. Feature differentiation, so the finder solution for the now and for the future. That's what you're able to do here. So don't think, you know, an ASIC is just for short term. It's not at all. It's for several years to come and you sit down if your application, if you've got the volume and, you know, you've, you've got the bomb that you want to reduce and you figure out the payback is going to be pretty short. It's a, it's a, good, it's a good way to go. IP security. This is an interesting one because um, if you buy various devices from various suppliers, um, there is a big black market out there, as we know. And you may have, you never know, you may have some devices that can be copied or are copied. Very difficult to copy an ASIC. Very difficult. And generally speaking, you know, um, our friends, wherever they are, generally don't bother because it's too difficult, too time consuming. The payback just isn't there, you know. So you get IP security. It's your design. It's protected. And then simpler inventory management. One part for all of your end products. So you'd sit down and you think, oh, I can use this here, 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 and here, you know? And basically it all adds up then. It's a, it's a good idea. Okay, so we started out by, you know, that was, that was the story behind that ASIC. And just to finish on the advantages of using an ASIC then, and there's a list here. The, the one I put first, of course, is the, you know, reduction, significant potentially reduction of electronic builds of material. So you can save a lot of money you know, if your volume is reasonable. Don't think that you need to have an ASIC if you are doing one million pieces. You don't, not at all. Um, most of our customers are ranging from something like 20K up to 250K pieces. You know, uh, that's, that's basically the kind of customer volumes that we deal with. And they have significant saving. Um, full custom capability, of course, it's, you, it's your definition, it's what you want, it's what you need. Um, ASIC is manufactured to your design specifications. The ASIC may be designed to support a portfolio of products. So the clever thinkers will figure out that, you know, I can have a portfolio of products that will use this ASIC. And so it's really better. Increased performance and reliability, because again, this device is specified and it does what, it, what it's supposed to do every time. Um, lower power consumption, dissipation, smaller form factor, and uh, customer's IP is protected, we mentioned. 
lower unit cost. Now think of this, you know, the lower, the, the unit will be lower cost than your collection of components, okay? Uh, and by the way, the other point I'd like to make here, you generally, uh, I don't think we've ever suffered from this, we don't discontinue, you know, manufacture discontinue components as such. You may suffer from that uh, from some suppliers at some point in time. So you eliminate that, that, that uh, actual danger. And then complete ASIC supply chain managed. So we manage the entire design to supply of the ASIC. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you.